welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, today, where am I taking you to? Well, I'm taking you to a very special day, the first day of Queen Elizabeth I's reign. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 17th of November, 1558, 25-year-old Elizabeth, daughter of King Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Boleyn, became Queen Elizabeth I following the death of her half-sister, Queen Mary I. In last year's video, I shared Sir Robert Norton's rather romanticised account of Elizabeth finding out she was queen and how she fell to her knees and, after a good time of respiration, uttered part of Psalm 18, the Latin verse translating to, This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. You'll find a link to that video in the description. But today, I wanted to share an alternative reaction, a speech recorded by Elizabeth I's godson, Sir John Harrington, who described it as words spoken by the Queen to the Lords at her accession, 1558. Now, it's not clear whether Elizabeth spoke these words on the 17th of November or whether she spoke them to the House of Lords on the 20th of November. But Elizabeth's biographer, David Starkey, notes that this speech makes no sense if it's dated to the 20th of November, saying, spoken, however, three days earlier in the fading light of her accession day, it becomes a thing of purpose. It addresses Elizabeth's own immediate concerns in the hours following her sister's death. And it addresses, still more pointedly, the concerns of her audience of ex-Marian councillors, most of whom were extremely frightened of what Madame Elizabeth will do with them, quoting the Ambassador Ferrier there. Whether these words were spoken on the 17th of November, when Elizabeth found out she was queen, or three days later, the words, well, they make a really wonderful speech. So I'm going to share them with you today. And I won't do as good a job as Elizabeth, I'm afraid. My lords, the law of nature moveth me to sorrow for my sister. The burden that is fallen upon me maketh me amazed. And yet, considering I am God's creature, ordained to obey his appointment, I will thereto yield desiring from the bottom of my heart that I may have assistance of his grace to be the minister of his heavenly will in this office now committed to me. And as I am but one body naturally considered, though by his permission a body politic to govern, so I shall desire you all, my lords, chiefly you of the nobility, everyone in his degree and power, to be assistant to me that I, with my ruling, and you with your service, may make a good account to Almighty God and leave some comfort to our posterity in earth. I mean to direct all my actions by good advice and counsel. And therefore, considering that diverse of you be of the ancient nobility, having your beginnings and estates of my progenitors, kings of this realm, and thereby ought in honour to have the more natural care for maintaining of my estate and this commonwealth. Some others have been of long experience in governance and enabled by my father of noble memory, my brother and my late sister to bear office. The rest of you being upon special trust lately called to her service only and trust for your service considered and rewarded. My meaning is to require of you all nothing more but faithful hearts in such service as from time to time shall be in your powers towards the preservation of me and this commonwealth. And for counsel and advice, I shall accept you of my nobility and such others of you, the rest as in consultation, I shall think meet and shortly appoint to the which also, with their advice, I will join to their aid, and for ease of their burden, others meet for my service. And they which I shall not appoint, let them not think the same for any disability in them, but for that I do consider a multitude doth make rather discord and confusion than good counsel. And of my goodwill you shall not doubt, using yourselves as appertaineth to good and loving subjects. 
I really love that last bit. It's a bit like too many cooks spoil the broth. She doesn't want too many, but she wants everyone to know that uh, she respects them. Like her father and siblings, Elizabeth had a way with words. I do love the oak tree tradition though, and I love that scene in the movie with Kate Blanchett as Elizabeth sitting under the oak tree in the parkland of Hatfield when the lords come to tell her of her accession. It's so dramatic and moving. And what I find interesting about that account is Elizabeth's use of the verse from Psalm 118. Um, it's a psalm of thanksgiving to God for his goodness and mercy. But what I find really interesting is the previous line that she doesn't quote. The psalm reads, The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Was Elizabeth seeing herself as the stone that her father and brother refused, a daughter who'd been made illegitimate, a daughter and sister who was removed from the succession, a bastard, but who became the headstone of the corner, who became important, who became queen? I think so, but then I'm quite a romantic. Elizabeth I reigned until her death on the 24th of March 1603. Her achievements as queen included defeating the Spanish Armada and turning England into a strong and dominant naval power, expanding England overseas, founding the Church of England through her religious settlement and all sorts of other things like being a patron of science and the arts. And of course, her reign is known as the Golden Age, but some people question that. It was far from a golden age for her Catholic subjects and those of her people who were living in poverty. Do check out last year's video. As I said, you'll find a link in the description uh, for that alternative uh, account of her accession and also how the date came to be celebrated as accession day. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a bishop who was involved in examining Protestants in Mary I's reign and who ended his days confined to the home of another bishop. I'll explain why and what happened in tomorrow's video. So do make sure that you're subscribed. You can click right there and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Thank you for joining me today. I do hope you've enjoyed this talk. Give me a thumbs up if you have and do feel free to leave a comment as well. I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye-bye.